God moves in mysterious ways. His purpose, his will, his plan. And we know it's God speaking to us through others, through nature, through people we meet. It could be a donkey, like with Balaam's ass in the Old Testament story. It could be a donkey. And people see things that we don't see things from their perspective because people are people and we are who we are. Even with the Holy Spirit, who guides us into all truth, there are times we just don't know what to do, what to say about people in certain situations. Today, Needs must go to a library in Norwich, UK, just to get a photocopy of a, a card which has got a sentiment about loneliness. Why? Because it's a meaningful card that has come to my attention in the last few days for somebody that I know, we know, for a number of years, decades really, with mental illness and OCD, a believer, a person who would call themselves a Christian, a churchgoer, and there is a, a but within this because spiritually they believe in Jesus Christ and they were claimed to follow Jesus Christ, but because of their mind being the battleground, they've been diagnosed with some sort of mental health issue. OCD, Obsessional Compulsive Disorder, a, a drug addiction, even addiction to medication to do with the mental illness, Plus, it could manifest with hoarding. There could be issues to do with the mind and the emotions, the soul, and the struggle to understand who Jesus Christ is and what Jesus is saying and not saying. So we're dealing with a generic person, doesn't matter if they're male or female, we're dealing with a person, let's say, who has all these difficulties mentally and emotionally with addiction, habits, dependencies, and it works out into some sort of hyper compulsive disorder to do with hoarding, too much stuff, or the other way around, very little stuff. We're talking about behavior. So today, going to the library in, in Norwich, UK to get the photocopy, there is something going on outside to do with some charity, raising funds for some charity, and there's a table to do with bric-a-brac. And that is just bits and pieces for household stuff, ornaments, things you find in a charity shop. And of course, there's a table full of bric-a-brac and they're trying to sell these items to raise money for the charity. And of course, I'm absolutely not interested in buying anything at all because Jesus wants me and us to declutter and get rid of stuff we don't need. To give it away. If you like, our barns are full of stuff, our houses are full of stuff that we don't need. And uh, it can get into hoarding. Hoarding things, even food. And there's, there's a reasonable amount of food that you need to store, not hoard, but store in your fridges, in your cupboards, 
in your freezers. But hoarding is not storing things that you need on a day-to-day -day basis. Hoarding is something different. So, meeting these people at the bric-a-brac stall, I am reaching out with the gospel of Jesus Christ, wanting to engage with members of the public to see what opportunities are there for um, explaining who Jesus is to them. And they're charitable people who are raising money for charity. So that, that's a good start. They are charitable people. So I approach the table with, uh, with a joke. I'll give you £100 for everything. No, I said £100 for everything. And of course, they interpreted that as like, I will give them £100 for everything on the table. And, and uh, there were four or five ladies there. And of course, they opened the hand and said, oh, thanks very much. I said, no, no, you give me £100, I'll take it all away. And they laughed. It was a joke. It was a joke. Of course, I don't want £100 from them to take all the clutter away. And I explained, actually, I shouldn't really be looking at this because I'm in the process of decluttering myself, getting rid of stuff. And so we then talked about what we do, we're trying to help people with mental health issues. And of course, some people we're trying to help do have a hoarding issue. And so I asked them, and one lady volunteered something, and so I asked them, how did they see it? And it turned out two, three, maybe four of them were ex-social workers working for social services in, in, a, in a professional capacity in Norwich, UK. And so it was, it was interesting to find out from their perspective about how they saw hoarding, compulsion, OCD, uh, mental illness. And one lady explained about anxiety, that people have emotional anxiety and they want to hold on to stuff which has meaning for them to do with memories and so forth, so forth. But we're not talking about just keeping a few things that are special memories from the past, the hoarding has become a real issue uh, for certain people throughout the UK. It's not just a, a small thing, it's something that has been growing for a number of years um, and programmes on UK TV, um, three or four channels, have regular programmes to do with SOS and it's to do with hoarding. And people come in to sort out the hoard, to either sell it, give it away, or throw it away. And there are people whose lives are out of control. And one of these ladies explained that it's a control issue, that people like to be in control, they feel they're in control if they've got stuff, and they're controlling their stuff. And of course, they want to control more stuff and more stuff and more stuff. And, and, and so the hoard grows. And I explained, I've watched these programs on TV, documentaries for the last five or six years. And it's a, it's a learning process to understand why people want to hold on to things that they don't need, they don't use, but they just want to keep them and as this lady said, it's a control issue. And I said, it's worse than we're describing, really, because there are some people whose houses are not just cluttered, but they're filthy, and they, they need to be cleaned out for health and hygiene purposes. Apart from the hoard, they have uh, lost control of being able to clean their property uh, and so people come in not just to sort the hoard out, clutter, but also the, the cleaning uh, issues as well. And then as we discussed that this morning with these ladies, 
we then looked at a documentary, I've seen two or three of them, where a serious mental illness is when they keep their own urine in bottles and they hoard their urine as much as other things they're hoarding. And so that's an extreme form of hoarding over something that cannot have any uh, future use, their urine itself. And this one lady explained that uh, children, babies, who use the potty, and they have to be told that whatever is left in the potty used to be part of them, the poo and the wee, but it's okay to leave it there because mummy and daddy have to take that away and they put that into the big toilet and get rid of that. And, and some little babies, children, can get quite anxious, this lady said, about letting that stuff go because they feel that's part of them. And then it starts to bring into perspective the stuff that people have, the things that they buy or keep over the years or being given, they can't get rid of it because they feel that's part of them and that is losing a part of them. But that's, of, of course, a psychological disorder because it's not them, it's not even a part of them. But yes, there are memories con uh, connected with the things that people want to keep. So what has this got to do with the Christian church? Well, there are some people in the Christian church who do have the issue of what we're describing, mental health, emotional disorders, addictions, dependencies on things or people could do with the past. They can't let go of these memories of people in the past they used to have in their life. And holding on to these memories, uh, it's very hard to um, bring people to the place of letting go. But Jesus can enable them to let go of the past. A, to forgive people, and B, to be forgiven by them. To repent of the things of the past and to let the things of the past go. Whether it's physical things, emotional memories, thoughts, feelings, things of the soul, even spiritual things, to let these things go from the past. Now the scriptures are very clear, Isaiah 43, 18 to 21, do not uh, forget the former things, God says, forget the former things, see I'm doing a new thing. God is making a way for the future. Now we know Christ is the way ahead. We are going the way of Christ. And Christ was in this world, but not of this world. And of course, when you read the four Gospels, you'll see Jesus left everything, mother and father, brothers and sisters, to do the will of God the Father, the one he, who sent him. And Jesus didn't have a lot of things to take with him. He didn't have a suitcase. He didn't have a trailer. He didn't have a donkey. He didn't have a cart. He literally didn't cart things around with him as he walked around Israel. In many ways, he was an itinerant preacher who had nothing except the clothes he stood up in, his sandals, the clothes he stood up in. He had no house, no possessions. For three years, he just went around doing good. People welcomed him into their homes, they fed him, they washed his clothes, they looked after him. That was over 2,000 years ago. In the year 2022, it's the 1st of October 2022, this so-called civilization, this year, this very moment in time, 
society has become more and more materialistic with consumerism and that is the way society has developed since the 50s and the 60s when the American business people brought over the concept of marketing making things that people want not need but want so by this year of the civilization civilization dot 2022 it is what it is and there is a status quo about life but here we are born again in Christ who was in the world not of this world we are here in this world not of this world yes we have possessions I have a car I have a place to stay I have a bed to lay my head down I have money in the bank I have these things, but do these things have me? Talking to these ladies in some sort of random meeting with people working on a bric-a-brac stall to raise money for charity was very helpful to help me to see, not just for myself, how not to hold on to things for emotional reasons, but to let them go. And that includes relationships of the past that are no longer current. Of course, I still love people emotionally on a human level. I love the people I've known uh, since childhood, of course. But when you understand that if it's not reciprocal, that relationship can very quickly uh, fizzle out but of course as a born-again disciple of Christ I never stop praying for whosoever of course my friends and family my earthly family and my earthly friends but when you realize that our friends are in Christ our family is in Christ the heavenly family, the body of Christ, are brothers and sisters who are in Christ, not of this world. And that's a clear statement I'm making. That my friends are in Christ. My brothers and sisters are in Christ. So what about my earthly family? Well, they're, if they're in Christ, they are my friends and family if they're not in Christ, that becomes an issue. Unity is with the Holy Spirit, God, and one another who have the Holy Spirit, who are in Christ, who are submitted to God the Father in Christ in the Holy Spirit. And that is the true church, the body of Christ. So I hope that's all been helpful. Certainly meeting these four or five ladies, most of which appear to have been social workers, that doesn't make them Christian. It doesn't make them saved. It doesn't make them born again. I did give my testimony. I did explain how Jesus came into my life. And Jesus set me free from things I used to do, habits, but progressively, Jesus is continually setting me free. And of course, he's telling me not to go back to the things of the past, the things I used to do, my emotional fixes, food, comfort eating. It's still an ongoing issue. And I have to be very careful not to see food as my comforter. And food is wonderful. Comfort food is wonderful, but not too much. A little comfort food for my stomach is okay. For me, no alcohol. I don't want alcohol in my body ever again, ever again. Not even communion wine. My decision. Not making a religion for anybody out there. My decision. My sacrifice. Other things too. 
some obvious things that are sinful things. But I don't want anything of this world to control me and my spirit, my soul, my body needs. I don't want anything of this world to control me. And that includes things, things that I have. And I am decluttering. It's an ongoing process. I am shedding, for me, papers, drawings, papers, writings, notes. That is my challenge, to keep shedding my things I don't need. And of course, at the end of the day, none of this can we take to heaven. All of it we must leave behind physically. We know Jesus is coming. He's not coming to take the physical stuff. He's coming to take us. Let's finish on this note then. Focus on Christ. Follow Christ. Obey Christ. When he comes, we must be ready. And if he comes, he, he tells us, don't go back to get anything for the journey. When he comes, he comes to take us. Nothing of this world we can take. We can't even take people that we know and love. If they're not ready for Christ when he comes, sadly, they're not ready. Read the four Gospels, look at the parable of the ten virgins, and understand, if you're not ready for Christ, you're not ready for Christ. None, if none of what I said has made sense so far, then I would urge you to become born again today, invite God to come in and be the Lord of your life, invite the Holy Spirit to be your teacher, to invite him, the Holy Spirit, within you so he can teach you and he can remind you and he can explain everything that I've explained to you now, that he can explain it to you according to scripture, according to the truth, First of October, 2022, John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. Pray for us as we pray for you. I gave one of the ladies my card, which simply has John 3.16 on it, John 3.16 and 17, a prayer for them to consider, not just for that one lady, but all of them. And my prayer is for them that as good as they've been in terms of care and social work, helping people, that the social work they've done is helpful, of course, very helpful. But the social gospel is not the true gospel. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin, no forgiveness of sin. And as good as social workers are, charitable so social workers, charitable people, churchgoers, whatever. None of what we do, our good works, are good enough. We have to come to Christ. We have to accept Christ, his death, his sacrifice, the blood that was shed to pay the price for our sins, my sins. And we have to resolve to go and sin no more to submit to the spirit of the living God, to allow change to come in our spirit, our soul, and our body, to no longer think of doing the things we used to do, no longer feel connected to the stuff that we used to have to make us feel okay, to feel in control. We must put off the old and we must live in the new. New wineskins receive the new wine. Old wineskins are no good. You read the Gospels, find out what Jesus said about such matters and receive Christ, receive the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything about Christ, the real Jesus Christ. God bless you, brethren of the one God. Pray for us as we pray for you. 
we'll speak again by the grace of God. God bless you.